Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 379. I've got a Q&A for you today. If you don't know my name, I'm Jeremy. I'm your host for the show. I'm the founder at Whistlekick. I love the martial arts. I love talking about martial arts. I love doing martial arts. And I love making martial arts products for martial artists. And you can find all of them at whistlekick.com. You can use the code PODCAST15. They'll get you 15% off everything, whether it's a shirt or a hat or a uniform or sparring gear or... Blah. So much stuff. So much stuff. I'm not going to run through the whole catalog right here. But if you're looking for things related to this show, you can find that at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. We do this show twice a week, all for free, and hopefully you will support us in any of the multitude of ways that you can do that. I feel like I use that word a lot, multitude. In any of the ways that you may want to, to show your appreciation, even if that's just leaving us a review or telling somebody else about this show, it means a lot. So I attempted to do something new in sourcing questions that we could use for a Q&A, because it's something I've always struggled with, is getting, getting the audience to ask questions. It would make my life so much easier if I was getting more questions. And honestly, it's a lot more fun for me. I enjoy the conversational aspect of the interview shows, but I don't get to do that on Thursdays terribly often. So if you ask some questions, I got, I got more. I got more and I can work with. So what I did is I went on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash whistlekick, we're at Whistlekick everywhere, in case you didn't know. And so I went live and I said, hey, ask me questions that I can use for the show. And like 15 or 20 people came on. Most of them were on for minutes. And they didn't ask me any questions. And it, it made me sad. But I got one from somebody named Tommy. So I'm just going to run with this and see if I can take it in a few different directions and see what happens. So the question that came in was, how many years have I been training? And that's, there, there are a couple different ways to answer that. So I am 39. I started training when I was four. So we've got like 35 and a half years if you want to look at the calendar. But my martial arts training has taken some, some various, it's been, it's been in different stages. You know, I grew up, I had a karate school I went to, and then I went to college and I did a few different things and there were some small gaps in between. There might be a month or two in between as I tried one school and you know, like I'm thinking of one school in particular where I just didn't like the people teaching, so I stopped until I found something else. You know, so there might be a, a a month or two gap in there over those four years, and then when I moved to Vermont, I started teaching, and then after a couple of years of doing that and trying to grow a business, that didn't work, so I stopped teaching, and I had a couple of years where I didn't have any formal training. So, do you want to call that? 35 years or 33 years, or maybe you have to round down to 30 years. I don't know. I say I'm a martial artist. And I've always been a martial artist. Whether or not the number of years matters, I, I don't know. It doesn't matter so much to me, other than when I think about it, it reminds me that I've been training for a while. I just love training. I just love getting better at different stuff. I love trying different martial arts. And, you know, right now I'm training in Taekwondo, in Kempo, in Karate, and in Kickboxing. And I'm not training multiple times a week in any of those because I'm busy and because some of the instructors live farther away and I've got other things going on. Like this, like this show, like Whistlekick. And, you know, you want to you wanna find a good way to get less martial arts training. It's start a martial arts business. You would think it would be the opposite. It's not. It's not even close to the opposite. No. It is not even close to supportive of your training. It should be because I've got people all around the world who have invited me to come train with them and I would love to, but it's busy. Things are busy. Things are busy. And you know what? Let's be real. If I was to go train with all these people, it gets expensive. So, yeah. That's why I do seminars sometimes. It allows me to train with other people and they foot the bill. It's great. That's the best way to do it. So if anybody wants me to come out and teach a seminar, let me know. Reach out. Now, what other questions can I spin out of this question? How many years have I been training? Well, I could ask myself about which of the styles or schools that I've trained in has been the most impactful. And I would say my answer is pretty much the same as almost everyone that's been on the show. It's the first school I trained in for a significant period of time. Well, in my case, it's the first school I trained in because I started when I was four and I left 
when I went to college at 18. So there's 14 years at one school. And that's the one that set the most tone for who I am as a martial artist. And because I was so young, who I am as a person. That was the school where I learned about competition and the importance of fundamentals. And I learned a bit about weapons. And it's where I learned to enjoy martial arts. So I learned how transformative it could be. And it's amazing that here we are 20 years later, and so many of the lessons that I learned out of that school are still things I think about almost daily. And there's a good chance that one or both of those instructors might be listening right now. So, hello. They will hopefully be coming on the show soon. We've talked about it. Hopefully we get that to happen. One of the questions that popped up from First Cup, and if you are not watching First Cup, it's the morning video show I do on YouTube at 6.30 Eastern on, I said YouTube, <laughs> uh, on weekdays. And there's even an audio feed, a podcast feed for it, if you want to check that out. But one of the questions that someone asked there was around my favorite techniques, my favorite kicks. And I answered that there, but I'll answer a slightly different question in a slightly different way here. And maybe I'll, I'll irritate some people with this one, but I don't mind doing that. And that's going to be, which kick do I think is my least favorite? I could even say the least useful. And I'm going to say the twist kick, that kind of inside roundhouse kick that requires a tremendous amount of flexibility. And it's not because I can't do it. I can do it. I can't do it head height. I have been able to in the past. But because you've got to be so darn close to someone to kick them with that, that there are almost every other option is better. So it, it requires a lot of skill and it's not really practical and it hurts my hips and I think it's silly. I think it's a, just a goofy technique. Now, if you like it, that's cool, but not a technique that I even find myself practicing unless, um, unless we are expected to in Taekwondo, unless it comes up. And then I'll do it. Now, if you bring that kick below the knee, I can see some application there as a, as a sweep, as, a, as taking somebody's leg out. That, I can see some value. And I'll give you one more question that I'm going to answer, and here it is. What's been the biggest failure from whistle kick or to come out of whistle kick? And as much as I don't like the word failure, I think there's some good stuff in asking myself this question. So I'm going to answer it for you. And that all has to do with me trusting other people's motivations a bit too much. In the early days of whistle kick, as I was trying to figure out how to get things going, everyone promised the world, oh, for just you know, $1,000 or $5,000 or $10,000, we can get you to, to this and help you do this and with this. And, and oh, I spent so much money on so little in a few of these cases. People that are even in the martial arts industry. There are people that I could, but never will call out publicly because that's not who I am, that have such a lack of integrity, I, I, I don't know that I would shake their hand if I met them. And so the thing I've learned out of that is that just because someone is a martial artist, just because they're a black belt or they hold some kind of certain title, doesn't mean they're a good person. Hopefully they are. And I still think that, that statistically, there's a better chance of them being a good person. But they're not always going to be that. Some people are jerks. And you can be a jerk with or without martial arts training. Sometimes you're just a jerk who can kick really well. So when you think about those things that happened, are they failures? Well, in a sense. But at the same time, you better believe that I learned those lessons very well because of the amount of money I spent to learn them. So there we go. I would love for people to send me more questions. You can comment at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com in the comments. You can comment on the YouTube post of this episode in the comments. You can write me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. Just send me some questions. And I would love to answer them 
in Q and A's. I would love for Q and A to be once a month. I really do enjoy this format, and you know, I don't know if anybody else does. Maybe that's the issue. Maybe you guys don't enjoy this format. Maybe that's why people don't ask questions. But tough. Can't want one of the eight episodes a month be for me. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna wind down here. Don't forget, podcast fifteen gets you fifteen percent at whistlekick.com. We do have product at Amazon. Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio.com is the spot for this and all of the other episodes. You can find us on social media at Whistlekick. We are on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. And as I mentioned, Jeremy at Whistlekick.com is my personal email address. That's it for today. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day. What? <laughs>